Oh, I've got new shoes. So have I. No, you haven't, Fizz. You've had those shoes for ages. Well, they were new once. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's play a shoe game. Yeah! yeah. Right, shoe, Jake. Oh, shoe, Bella. Shoe, Fizz. Oh, that's <laughs> not a proper shoe game. <laughs> You're silly, Milo. <laughs> Let's ask Judy to help us. Oh, we want to play a shoe game, Judy. Yeah. Can you think of one? A shoe game? Mm. Let me see now. Mm, no, don't think I know one. Aww. So we'll have to make one up. Yeah! You can join in with this. <laughs> now, I've got four pairs of shoes. See if you can guess who they belong to. Mm. Now, one pair of boots. They're light for running and strong for kicking, and they've got studs in the bottom to stop you slipping over. <laughs> now, do they belong to Fizz, Milo, Bella, or Jake? <laughs> well, I couldn't dance in those. <laughs> it's me, me. I get football boots, and I'm the football yes. yes! Ah, a nice pair of willies. They're made of rubber, so your feet don't get wet when you trudge through mud and puddles. Do they belong to Fizz, Milo, Bella or Jake? Well, you don't wear wellies on the moon. Oh, no, <laughs> and you don't play football, Lyndon. No. But they're my wellies! I'm a farmer and I need them so I can splash through mud! <laughs> <laughs> What's the next pair going to be? Ah, some pretty little dancing shoes. They're as light as a feather and they've got ribbons to tie them on tight. So, do they belong to Fizz, Milo, Bella or Jake? Oh, I could really dance in those. No, you don't get dancing spacemen, Fizz. Well, they're my shoes. And finally, a pair of pudgy space boots. <laughs> they're big and heavy to keep your feet on the ground and stop you floating off into space. <laughs> But who do they belong to? Is it Fizz? Yeah. Milo? Yeah. Bella? <laughs> or Jake? Oh, uh, well, I've got mine. Yeah, <laughs> and I've got mine. Oh, and right. me. Oh, whose could they be? Oh, they're mine! <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the space girl! <laughs> <laughs> so what happens now? Well, you put all your shoes back in the box. Oh, oh. right. Uh -oh. Here you go. Yeah. Now, I'm putting your shoes over here. When I say go, You've all got to run across the room and find the two shoes that match your outfits. Oh. The first person to hold them both up is the winner. Yeah! Oh, uh, what were mine? Football boots, Jay. Ready, steady, go! I'm not going back, back Milo! Oh. Oh, doodles, you can't stand there. We're playing a game. <laughs> OK. Ready, steady, <laughs> go! Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 Well, there's only one in the box. Yes, and I've only got one spacey boot. Oh, and I've only got one as well, Milo. Oh, you all had two in there just now. Mm. How very strange. It's a story called The Elves and the Shoemaker. Oh. Long ago, a young shoemaker and his wife lived together in a beautiful city. The shoemaker worked hard all day, but no matter how many shoes he made, he couldn't earn enough money to live on. Finally, the day came when all that he had left in his workshop was one small piece of leather. Oh, what's leather? Stuff you make shoes from, Jake. Mm. That evening, the shoemaker carefully cut out the leather to make his last pair of shoes the following morning. He and his wife went to bed, and soon they fell into a deep sleep. The next morning, the shoemaker went downstairs. And there, on his work table, stood a fine pair of shoes ready-made. Oh, it's a puzzle, just like our missing <laughs> shoes. <laughs> the shoemaker picked up each one in turn and inspected it carefully. They were the most exquisite pair of shoes he had ever seen. Oh, I know what happens next. Mm -hmm. well, he sells those two pairs of shoes and buys some more of that uh, leather stuff. That's right, Jake. That morning... A very rich man was walking through the town with his wife when he noticed the shoes on display in the workshop. The shoes suited him so well that he willingly offered the shoemaker a very high price for them. 
With the money, the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather to make two more pairs of shoes. In the evening, the shoemaker cut out the leather once more, laid out the pieces on his work table, and went to bed early. Oh, I wonder who's helping him. Now, let's see. In the morning, he found both pairs of shoes sitting on his work table with not a stitch out of place. Soon, two customers arrived, and they paid him handsomely, for they had never seen such fine shoes. Now he could buy enough leather for four new pairs of shoes. The same thing happened as it happened before. During the night, the leather was made into four perfect pairs of shoes. Then, one evening just before Christmas, as he and his wife were sitting by the fire, the shoemaker suddenly said, I would like to sit up and watch tonight so that we may see who it is that comes and does my work for me. Ah, what a good idea! exclaimed his wife. So they left a candle burning, hid themselves behind a curtain in a corner of the room, and waited. As soon as the town clock struck midnight, in came two little elves, quite naked. (laughs) 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 But uh, what are elves? Oh, they're tiny little people, Jake, or like fairies. They sat themselves down on the shoemaker's table, took up all the leather that was cut out, and set to work. They stitched and wrapped and hammered and tapped faster than anyone the shoemaker had ever seen. Within a few minutes, the job was done, and a neat row of shoes stood ready for use upon the table. Cool. Then the two elves scurried away as quickly and mysteriously as they had come. The next evening, the shoemaker's wife stopped outside a draper's shop and said, Those little elves have made us rich, and we ought to do them a good turn if we can. I shall buy some scraps of fabric at this shop and make each of them a linen shirt, a silk waistcoat, and a velvet coat and pair of trousers into the bargain. (laughs) You can make each of them a little pair of shoes. Oh, yes. yes! That evening, the couple laid the clothes out neatly on the table instead of the usual pieces of leather. Then they lit a small candle and hid themselves once more behind the curtain. (laughs) There they are, look. (laughs) As soon as the town clock struck midnight, in danced the two elves. When they saw the new clothes laid out for them, they laughed out loud. The shoemaker and his wife smiled at each other. The elves dressed themselves in the twinkling of an eye. And then, just as suddenly as before, they were gone. The shoemaker and his wife went happily to bed and slept peacefully. And they never saw the two elves again. Oh, (laughs) oh, they made shoes for each other. That was a lovely story, Judy. (laughs) I wish we could solve our problem like that. Mm. Well, we'll just have to look again for the disappearing shoes. Yeah. Oh, hello, Max. Have you finished your gardening? I haven't even started yet, Bella. Oh. Well, why not, Max? I've lost my gardening shoes. Oh. I put them down on the ground, sat on the slide mm-hmm. to take off my other shoes, yeah. and when I reached down, my gardening shoes were gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, strange. Oh, oh really? really? We've had a very funny day, Max. Oh, tell me about it. Well, lots of missing shoes. <laughs> Shoe, shoe, I love this shoe. Where's that coming from? Oh, under there, Max, or the shapes are barking. <laughs> oh, our dressing up shoes. Oh, our wellies. <laughs> and Max's gardening shoes. Yeah, that's not all. <gasps> Hello. Doodles. So that's it. Oh, dogs love taking shoes and chewing them. Oh, doodles is the shoe snatcher. Oh, shoo-ree, shoo-shoo-be-doo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>